Hi, everybody. We are here today for our monthly educational webinar. Today, we'll be talking about what is it really like to be a 24-7 caregiver. I'm Pamela Wilson. I help caregivers and aging adults solve caregiving problems, and I do this today through my online programs and courses. For the past 20 years, I have been an on-call 24-7 caregiver, much like many of you caregivers out there. I'm going to start the slide presentation, so I will turn off my camera and transition to the presentation. Here we go. Monthly caregiving support group. Just a quick reminder, what are the benefits of these support groups? The benefits are solutions to common caregiving questions and problems. There are no silly questions. There is no judgment. There's no room for blaming here. I don't believe any of that belongs in caregiving. You are able to interact with other caregivers who understand what caregiving is like. You can gain confidence in your abilities and in your decision making. Because in caregiving, it's really what you don't know that results in problems. And none of us are born to be a caregiver. We don't wake up and have all these caregiving skills. During life, we don't talk about caregiving. We don't expect to be a caregiver. And we don't really ever expect to need care. Support groups and courses can also be a lot of fun. They can offer socialization and, and camaraderie that you may not have in your family caregiving situation. And every month there is a specific topic. Here's how it works. If you're here, you are more than welcome to post questions in the chat after the presentation, and I will answer them. These groups usually are the first Saturday of the month, although if I have to change the date, you can click here and you will find out the date of the next group. Also, more support. Join my Facebook group called The Caregiving Trap. In my Facebook page, there's videos that are posted there every day. My website has a wealth of free information. A caregiving library, a newsletter, this support group, and my courses. So let's start with what is life like for a 24-7 caregiver? If you have children, think back to, and I'm down here, think back to when the baby was born. You probably had sleepless nights. There was very little time for yourself. You were a little bit unsure about what it takes to take care of a baby. Well, it's no different when you're caring for an aging parent. It's new territory. There are sleepless nights. There's a lot of worry. And Caring for an aging parent does become similar to caring for a baby or a child. And I don't say this in a negative manner or trying to make aging adults feel bad. But as their health declines, as they need more help, aging adults become more helpless and they need more help and care. So that is why I say that sometimes caring for aging parents is similar to caring for children or a baby, just because they do need so much help. Managing daily care can feel like a full-time job. As the health and the daily care needs of aging parents grows over time, the responsibilities become greater. You may be managing incontinence, medications, doctor appointments, cleaning the house, meals, everything that has to do with hands-on care, which can be much more stressful. As the result of being a caregiver, whether you're a spousal caregiver or an aging child caring for a parent, if you are more than 20 hours a week, if you are full-time, if you live with that person, you can become very isolated and depressed because you've given up much of your normal life. You may still work, but after work, on the weekends, you're caring for a loved one. You may have given up all of your social activities, caring for your aging parent. You may not be able to go out to the gym to do as many things for yourself as you could. 
And as a result, sometimes caregivers do become helpless, hopeless, isolated, and depressed. This is exactly why support groups and courses are beneficial because you join with other caregivers who are like you, who are experiencing the same stress levels, the same anxiety. Caregivers understand other caregivers. People in your life who are not involved caregiving may have absolutely no idea how you feel on a daily basis or what you go through. This is the place to gain help and support from people who understand. If a loved one has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia, the care needs and the stress is usually very great. This is because over time, so from here to here, the care needs increase. You're doing more hands-on care. People with Alzheimer's and dementia come with a lot of other complications, behaviors being one of them. They may experience behaviors like repeating, pacing, wandering, trying to leave the house, trying to get out. They may refuse care. And this makes that caregiving situation all the more difficult. That leads to bathing. Bathing and personal care can actually turn into an event and sometimes a battle. I don't know if you remember when you were little, but I can only speak for myself. I hated taking baths and showers. I had to be bribed to get into that tub with Mr. Bubble and toys and things like that. It's no different for aging adults, except their fears are different. Maybe they slipped and almost fell in the shower or in the tub. Maybe they don't like water spraying in their face. Maybe they're cold. There's a lot of reasons that aging adults don't want to bathe, but hygiene is extremely important to maintain hygiene, avoid skin wounds, avoid urinary tract infections. We have to find ways to bathe our aging adults, our aging parents, and we talk a lot about this in my caregiving courses. Friends and family, let's face it, when caregiving needs accelerate, Sometimes they just disappear. And the excuses are many. I don't have time. Oh, I don't want to see my parents look like that or age like that. And you're the brother or sister saying, well, and you think I should have to? They just make excuses for why they can't help. And as caregivers, we have to accept it. We may not like it, but we have to accept that other people make the choice not to care. Our piece in that situation is that when our loved one passes away, we will know that we have done everything or that we did everything we possibly could to make that situation better. We as the caregiver aren't going to have any regrets. We are not going to have any worries about what we didn't do. Leave that to the people who didn't want to be involved. They have to manage their own grief their own way. One thing I do want to bring up about Alzheimer's and family saying, oh, I don't want to visit because they aren't going to remember who I am. That is pointless and it's an excuse. That's more about how the caregiver feels and how that person feels. I can tell you that even a person who has Alzheimer's and dementia, if they don't know who you are anymore, so they don't recognize you as the son, the daughter, the husband, the wife, they still have a sense of knowing you from somewhere. They still know and they still can receive comfort from your visits. So don't feel like you shouldn't visit because they're not going to remember who you are. That is way more about you than it is about that person. Go give them comfort. Go and visit. Planning is important when you are a full-time caregiver, a 24-7 caregiver, for a number of reasons. The first is that many caregivers become more sick than the persons for whom they caregive. If something happens to you, who's the backup? Who is going to care for your spouse? Who is going to care for your aging parent? And more importantly, if you die unexpectedly, heart attack, car accident, something happens to you, where is your plan? If you don't have an estate plan, power of attorney documents, it's time to complete them. There are two courses on my website. One is called Stay at Home, which is the course that helps us figure out how to stay at home if we are the aging adult and how to help aging parents and spouses stay at home. 
The other one is power of attorney. That course takes you through all the basics of the legal speak, how to choose a power of attorney. If you are a power of attorney, what are you supposed to do? What are your responsibilities? We talk about that because in my professional career of over 20 years, I was a court appointed guardian, medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney, personal rep of the estate, trustee, and a care manager. I, more than anybody else, can teach you how to be a power of attorney. And if you are the person who appointed the power of attorney, teach you how to work with that person so that you get the care that you need and so that the healthcare system doesn't take advantage of you. That also is included in the stay at home course. Caregivers need help, but they don't know where to turn. And I want to talk about this. Caregiving webinars and courses can open up a new world for you. If you've never done them before, sure, it can feel intimidating. You might worry about whether you have the right computer skills. If you visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, and at the top, there's a bar. And if you click on the How I Help, there is actually a page on what is a caregiving webinar? How does it work? How do I sign up? If you're seeing this, you may be watching a webinar replay, or you may be watching this as a video on my website, on my YouTube channel, on a Facebook page, somewhere else, because I do publish these as videos so that I can teach people the benefits of caregiving webinars and the importance of caregiving webinars and the difference that it can make in your life. Because we're not born with caregiving skills. We don't talk about caregiving through life. Our aging parents may not talk about needing care. They may not make a plan. If you're a caregiver, it's likely that you got an emergency phone call and it happened overnight. It was unexpected and you've been thrown into this situation. Some days you may feel confident. Other days you may feel like, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's part of caregiving. And that's what we talk about in my courses. There's nothing that is off limits, but I do work toward the positive things in caregiving and how we can transform caregiving situations that aren't ideal and have a lot of problems to a much better longer term care situation for the family because we want care for our loved ones. We are not saying that we don't feel responsible or that we're not responsible, but let's face it, every caregiver has a bad day. It was no different for me in 20 years. In 20 years, I had a lot of bad days but I learned how to manage through them and I can help caregivers do that. So hope and help is here. I will share a couple of pages from my website. Questions, if you have questions or ideas for the next topic for the monthly support group, you can email them to me at inquiryforpamela at pameladwilson.com. Go to Facebook, join my Facebook group, check out my website, there is a wealth of information there. And here are two links to the courses on my website. So the first one is my stay at home course, which helps you learn all of the things that you don't know about helping loved ones stay at home because caregiving doesn't come to us naturally. Second one is power of attorney. We talked about that. Everybody should have a power of attorney if you're over the age of 18. It is so important, especially if you are involved in an unexpected medical accident. So I'm going to turn off the slide presentation. I'm going to turn on the camera just so I can say goodbye to you. Thank you for watching this caregiving webinar. I so appreciate you being with me. My name is Pamela Wilson. For the past 20 years, I have helped caregivers and aging adults solve caregiving problems. I've been on call 24-7 in hospitals, emergency rooms, nursing homes, assisted living communities, memory care, and I've even supervised 24-hour care in the home of my clients. I've been a court appointed guardian, a medical and financial power attorney, personal rep of a state trustee and care manager. And I know that I can give you hope and help your caregiving situation and make it better. I hope to see you on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, on my Facebook page, which is also PamelaDWilson.com, and in this support group next month. Have a great day. I will sign off and see you next month.